talking about the Compromise of 1850. So we're going ahead a couple years, and we're going to have to deal with the arrow down. We're going to have to deal with the aftermath of the of the war with Mexico. Next slide. Now we ended up with all this territory. We got Oregon territory. That had nothing to do with the war with Mexico, but it, it uh, it's it's something we have to deal with now. We have uh, all this territory. We got uh, we got a lot of people going into California. We got a lot of people going into the Salt Lake area, and we got Texas. And you see this border with Texas. Hmm, there's uh, we're gonna see what. Yeah, what, 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 what's the deal Texas with that? Sus. Yeah. So, so, um, and then we got all this territory, and this, all this territory originally came from France in 1802, the Louisiana Purchase. Right, exactly. Next slide. Now, this is going to upset the balance in the Senate. In 1849, we have 15 free states, 15 slave states. And if California comes in as a free state, that's going to upset the balance. Next slide. Now, the initial solution to the problem is to just extend the 1820 compromise line all the way out to the Pacific Ocean. And everyone, really, everyone, especially in the Senate, you know, they're back east. They don't really understand what's going on out west initially. And they say, okay, this is what we're going to do. And so that, that's the initial proposal. But we have people in California, a lot of people in California, a lot of newcomers there, who are starting to gain a California identity. And they really see California as, as being this right here. California, California. Now there is a question as to the uh, eastern, uh, the, the, the yeah, the eastern border. Is it going to extend all the way over the the Sierra Nevadas, or is it going to be in the Sierra Nevadas? So that's a question they have to figure out. Um, yeah, and then Texas. What is you know, are, is Texas going to keep all that territory they claimed? Mm, because it goes over the line. So this is this is going to be problematic. Next slide. So, to help solve this major problem, all these major problems, yeah. the, in the, the wisdom of the legislators of Kentucky, they decide to send Henry Clay, calling him out of retirement. He's been in retirement for like seven, eight years. Yeah. They call him out of retirement to go to Washington and fix the problem. Henry Clay. So I, I've seen, I'm going to show you three, uh, three photographs of three men that I showed you three paintings of a few weeks ago. Now Henry Clay realizes that we have to all come together as Americans and it's going to take a compromise. Next slide. So he goes all over the country on his way to Washington, D.C., and, you know, women are, like, screaming at for him, trying to cut locks of hair off of his head, because he's a huge celebrity. He's like a rock star. And oh, wow. he's got all these ideas. The first one is California needs to be a, uh, a free state um, with the uh, boundaries that they so use, with, with sensible, it says suitable boundaries, and so that means the eastern boundary is in the Sierra Nevadas, not over, not including all of Sierra Nevadas. Um, we can't introduce slavery where it did not exist in old Mexico. Uh, the state of Texas ought to have smaller boundaries, but guess what? We're going to give them debt relief. It's a compromise, right? A compromise. Now, going on, uh, he says we cannot abolish slavery in, in the District of Columbia because we have these representatives who are elected to Congress from the South and they have to bring their 
slaves. They would, you know, they would feel, you know, insufficient without them. So, we're not going to abolish slavery, but we're going to get rid of the slave trade. So you're not going to see people being sold right down the street from our nation's capital. Now, if you really need another slave, you can go across the Potomac River to Alexandria, buy all the slaves you want there. So bring them back over. That's fine. But we're not, we're not going to force these northern representatives who come and represent the north to have to see people being sold, bought and sold in the streets of Washington, D.C. <clears throat> and then we're going to have to have a more strict fugitive slave law. Next slide. This is Daniel Webster. Daniel Webster, you'll remember, he is a uh, senator from Massachusetts, and he is, he is he believes that slavery is wrong, it is evil, he believes that it should be ended, but he believes in the union more strongly than that. And so he comes, he gives a speech on the 7th of March. It's called the 7th of March speech. And in that speech, he ends his political career because he comes out in favor of the compromise. <clears throat> and it's too much for the voters in Massachusetts. Next slide. He begins the speech, Mr. President, I wish to speak today not as a Massachusetts man, nor as a northern man, but as an American, and a member of the Senate of the United States. America. So he, what he's doing, what he's doing, yeah, he's, complete, he's, he's committing political suicide, but he is doing what the founders intended the Senate to do, to think of the big picture. Not just represent your state. Yeah, that's supposed to happen too. But you're, you're, the Senate, more so than the House, is supposed to think of the big picture, what is going to happen to the whole nation rather than just Massachusetts. Because people in Massachusetts don't want slavery, they want freedom, and they, they do not, um, so they're, they're, they're not going to elect him to another term next year. Next slide. Now, you might remember John C. Calhoun. He was Jackson's first vice president. There was a falling out over the uh, nullification crisis. He left to go become a senator from South Carolina, and there he stayed in the Senate for almost 20 years. And he is going to give his last speech. Actually, when he gives his last speech from the Senate floor, it's not him giving it. He showed up, but he was too weak to give the speech. He has, he has it written, and he hands it off to another senator to give. And he is against the compromise because he... Doesn't he doesn't believe that you need to end slavery anywhere. And then he dies, like a few weeks after that. Next slide. So, the debate begins in February. Early February, goes on through March, April, May, goes on through the summer. And these senators are not used to this. You know there's no air conditioning. It's hot in Washington, D.C. It's humid. And they're all wearing like suits, like black suits. Yeah, it is not comfortable to be there doing this job in summertime. So usually they take a break. And there's actually a, one senator from Florida who gives a speech saying, we have to end debate and, and, uh, and uh, go into recess because the carpets need to be clean. Now, that may sound really funny and frivolous. However, however, back at this time, it was difficult to clean carpets. But you also have a certain senator from Texas, Sam Houston. You'll remember him. Uh, Santa Ana surrendered to him long ago. And he 
He's a senator now. And while he is listening to speeches in the Senate, he whittles wood. So there's all these wood shavings around his desk. It is a mess. Nobody ever cleans it up. So, next slide. The debate goes on and everything falls apart. Let me talk to you about parliamentary procedure here. You're, in parliamentary procedure, you're not, you're not normally supposed to have all these different topics in one bill. Uh, at this time, it, it's, uh, this bill is nicknamed the Omnibus Bill. It's a, that's a term we use a lot nowadays. But it was kind of being made fun of. It was like, oh, this bill just has everything in it. Um, and it was supposed to be... He was supposed to have everything in it to fix the problems. And Henry Clay felt very strongly that it had to all be in there. We all had to win and lose together. And Daniel Webster agreed with that. Now, most other senators couldn't swallow that. And into this mess steps a very short man. Stephen Douglas from Illinois, and and I, I make comment about his size because it was uh, during late uh, a few years he's going to have a debate with uh, Abraham Lincoln. He'll defeat Abraham Lincoln during the Lincoln Douglas debates. Now he's actually um, you know very short even for the time. Abraham Lincoln very tall for the time, and so there was quite the contrast in their height during the debates. Now. He says 